Hello, my name is Bo Young Woo. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of our MIDR paper titled Semantic Segmentation of 3D Medical Images Through a Kaleidoscope. I'll begin by defining the kaleidoscope transform. The kaleidoscope transform formalizes the concept of downsampling and concatenating an image with itself. It converts an image or array of any dimension into evenly spaced downsampled images of itself along each axis, each scaled by a given smear factor. Interested readers are encouraged to have a look at this referred paper, which first proposed the kaleidoscope transform. A kaleidoscope transform with a smear factor of 1 and an arbitrary downsampling factor can be efficiently achieved via element reordering. The figures show examples for 2D images to help with understanding. The current work employed this simplified version of kaleidoscope transform modified for use with a 3D image segmentation model. In our 3D segmentation model, the downsampled images would be arranged as a batch instead of concatenating along each axis. For example, the images used in our study have the dimensions of 160 times 384 times 384. So a kaleidoscope transform with a downsampling factor of 4 would rearrange this 3D image into a batch of 64 voxel-shifted low-resolution copies of the original image with the dimensions of 40 times 96 times 96. Our proposed segmentation model is CAN 3D with K. The model was based on the 3D version of context aggregation network which uses dilated convolutions for multi-scale context aggregation. The main modification here was the addition of kaleidoscope transform before the convolution operations and inverse kaleidoscope transform after the convolution operations. The output from the final convolution layer would be the predicted segmentation maps for the downsampled images. The inverse kaleidoscope transform would then rearrange all the voxels back to their original positions to produce the final output. The proposed CAN3D model with the kaleidoscope transform was compared with the vanilla CAN3D without the kaleidoscope transform. The figure shows example outputs from the models trained with or without dropout. The naive CAN3D without dropouts produced poor segmentation masks for the bone volumes. The one with dropouts was better but still erroneous. The proposed model with or without dropouts had some errors as well, but their bone segmentation masks were more plausible. Segmentation masks for smaller structures such as the cartilages, menisci, and cruciate ligaments looked plausible in all models. On average, the dye's similarity coefficient values and the average surface distance values for the bone volumes were better with the proposed CAN3D models with the kaleidoscope transform. But for the smaller structures, the dye's scores were worse and the average surface distance results were mixed. The host of distance values had a clearer pattern. The proposed CAN3D model with dropouts produced significantly lower host of distances than the other models for all labels. Due to the small size of the training set, the models without dropouts quickly overfitted to the training data. Adding dropouts to the vanilla cantery reduced the degree of overfitting, but a greater amount of reduction in overfitting was observed by adding dropouts to the cantery with the kaleidoscope transform. Another notable observation was that the test loss converged in a more stable manner. The dropout seemed to have a synergistic effect when used with a kaleidoscope transform in regularizing the model. And despite having additional operations, the proposed model had shorter training and inference time as shown in the table. By decomposing a large 3D image into a batch of smaller images, the kaleidoscope transform may have reduced the time required for convolution operations. The proposed CAN3D model has benefits of both patch-based approach and volume-based approach. The study showed that the proposed model with dropout generalizes well without the need for data augmentation when the training set is extremely small. Yet, since the patches are put back together at the end, it preserves the overall 3D structure and only requires a single inference, having a fast inference time. However, the current study also demonstrated that the model still has its limitations, including limited accuracy in the segmentation of small structures. Future studies are expected to include adding further improvements to the model. 
Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.